Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I've got a 2004 BMW 545i in the shop. Just purchased this from an insurance auction. It was there labeled as an electrical issue. And in this case, it's because it's missing the gauge cluster, the infotainment system with the display and the head unit, uh, the HVAC control, and a bunch of trim pieces. One of the connectors is also cut behind the gauge cluster and the ignition is not turning. So a couple of issues with the interior as far as electrical components, but other than that, it's a pretty clean car. seems to have really good tires, brakes look almost brand new, the engine compartment also looks very clean, nothing's missing, nothing's broken, the interior is also very clean, none of the seats are ripped, all the door panels, the dash, no cracks, so overall it seems to be a really good car. It isn't running so the first thing we want to try and do is figure out that ignition issue so we can try and turn the car over try and start it and then we'll go from there so let's get into that not only was the ignition not turning but the fob wasn't working either so the first step is to replace the battery and on this fob you need to cut the fob in half to access the battery when i cut the fob in half I noticed some corrosion on the circuit board of the key fob. I just tested the battery and it's reading at about 2.9 volts, which is just under the three volts it's rated at. So I'm going to clean off the corrosion, but I want to remove the battery first. On this fob, you need to desolder two leads that connect the battery to the fob circuit board. One's right there and the other is right there. So I will remove these two leads, which will then allow me to remove the battery and clean it up. Now, let's test this. Now it says 3.04. All right, let's put the key back together and we'll see if it works. All right, I didn't get it on camera, but the buttons on the key fob worked, although the ignition still won't turn. So I was able to pick up a used steering column from the same parts car as I got the other parts from along with the ignition and key. So I'm gonna swap that column into the car now. The first step is to remove the plastic covers on the top and bottom of the column, which I've already done. You can see they're removed. Then you'll need to put a T20 Torx up through a hole in the bottom of the column to release the airbag. 
The hole that you put the Torx in is directly in the center of the airbag just behind the steering wheel. You can see the Torx screwdriver I have right here and you just push directly up and here are the rods that hold the airbag in. You can see when you push up on the bottom one, the other ones suck in and release the tabs. You just gotta keep kind of working at it. It's a little bit difficult, or at least mine was. Just keep pushing up on it and you'll kind of feel that tension release. Once the airbag pops out, there's only one electrical connector holding it in. Just unclip that electrical connector and it should be free. Here are the clips that the rods hold to on the back of the airbag. The next step is to remove this bolt right here. I believe it is a 14 or a 15 and then the steering wheel should come off. There is one electrical connector back here. What we're gonna do now is there are four six millimeter allens coming from the bottom two kind of towards the front and then two there in the back and then i believe it's an e10 so that holds the steering column up under the dash and then there's an e10 that holds the shaft down in the splines near the firewall so you take the e10 out the four allens and then there's going to be a couple of uh, electrical plugs down underneath and then the whole column should come out. Let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to start with the E10 and then move to the Allens. Okay, so we've got both steering columns here. This is the one from the parts car. Came with the key. Key works, ignition works how it's supposed to. This one does not. So, my plan is to take the transponder out of this key fob Put it into the key fob that works this ignition and put this in the car. So we're going to transfer all of this stuff to the front of this one and then put it back in the car and we'll see if we can make it work. Uh, I can't get this tumbler out because you have to be able to turn the key to the accessory position to pull the tumbler out to get a new one. So my plan is to put this one back in the car. If it works, then I'll pull the tumbler out of this one and get one that matches this key and then swap all of the insides from this fob back over to this fob uh, just to see if it'll work. I got this whole column for next to nothing. Pretty much he just threw it in for free along with all the other parts that I got. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, we're going to start transferring all of this over to this column and then put it back in the car and see if it'll run. All right. The first thing I've pulled off of this one is actually the ignition switch. So I'm going to start by pulling the ignition switch off of this one. There is a plug which is from the antenna. I think these are actually Allens, but the T10 seems to be working. That seems to be working just fine. 
now let's put it over on this one. It, it can only go on one way. There's a little groove. Focus in here. So this groove here has to line up with the groove on the column. And you'll be able to see that when you take it off. Okay, got that swapped. Now let's just start pulling all these other switches off. Seems like there's, if I pull these three off, the whole assembly might come off. So let's try that. There we go. Yeah, so you got three, I think there were T20s, here, here, and here. Takes the whole assembly off. Now let's transfer that to this one. Okay, so that's everything for the column. Here are the two keys. Here is the original key. And here is the one off the parts car. All right, so now we're gonna cut into here. There, this is the key we need. Boom, this is the fob piece we need. There we are. So eventually what I'll do is clean these edges up and then glue this key back together. But for now, I'm just gonna tape it back together like I did the other one. So now, this is the parts car key, which will work the parts car ignition, and my original car's key fob, which the car should be coded to, so that should be good. So let's uh, put the steering column back in and hook everything up and see what happens. So I've got the steering column back in. So that's accessory, and I heard a couple clicks. Now there's on, and I heard some clicks. There's start, and that's not doing anything. But yeah, I could definitely hear fuel pump and other things turning on. The next thing I need to do is wire in the new connector, because they cut this one. So wire in the connector, put all the dash back together, and then I think we'll be good. Now, I've already picked these pieces up from a parts car, got the display, got the gauge cluster, and I've got the stereo back here, which is also a part of the GPS. While I picked those parts up, I picked up this whole wiring harness behind the dash. I wanted to have it just in case I needed any connectors, any wires, anything else that was cut that I didn't see. I know I needed one connector for sure for the gauge cluster 
and the guy with the parts card just let me take this out as well. Here's the connector for the gauge cluster. I'm gonna cut it back giving myself tons of space. It's about 10 wires, I'll solder that in and everything should be fine. Here I am starting to solder in the connector. I'll strip all of the wires in the car as well as on the connector, slip on the heat shrink, connect all the wires together, solder them together, then apply heat to the heat shrink to seal the connections in. Okay, so I've got the harness all done. I've got the gauge cluster here. Just hooked the battery up. My CD changer is going crazy over there. Let's plug this in. and a lot of lights on but look at that 110,000 miles all right so that works let's get that harness all squared away and we'll shove that thing back in there so we're gonna put some electrical tape on here I guess what we could get next is the display up here. All right, well here is the display. This one's a little bit scratched, but I think once it's in there and I kind of polish it up a little bit, maybe even use some like ceramic coating or something, um, it'll be fine. There are two connectors on the back of the display unit you need to connect. Then you'll insert the bottom of the unit into the dash and rotate it up until the holes for the two screws line up. Okay, there we go. Let's see if anything comes up over here. Negative. Wonder if that is a coating problem or if I need the head unit first. Yeah, so this is what mine looks like. This one's got one, two, three, and then I think a small one here, so four. So let's see, we are not looking for these. Those can go back now. Okay.
Okay, so I've got the wrong plugs here. I think this is the wrong unit for my car. I'm missing a couple plugs. So I am going to just plug it in and see if anything happens. I want to see if this turns on. This is not turning on with just the key. I mean, I think it needs this to turn on. So let's plug this in. Okay, so my battery died. I've got the gauge cluster in. I've got the display in. I've got the stereo head unit navigation system in. This car originally did not have navigation, but I was able to salvage some of the cables I needed from the wiring harness that I got um, to be able to hook this up completely. Anyways, it turns on head unit or the the display turns on everything seems to be working uh, this on the other hand is stuck so I don't know if I can pull it out and maybe clean off some of the contacts on the inside or just replace it and then the only other thing that goes here is the climate control which I have coming the vents with trim, which I have coming. And then down here, there is a button for traction control, I think, and then parking assist. And that will come with a trim piece as well. So anyways, those two pieces are coming. So right now what I wanna do is I did fire it up last night, but I didn't hook my scanner up to it yet so I'm gonna do that right now for the first time so there's on you can see that turning on you can hear CD changers and stuff going so we've got quite a few Go back through them again. Let's clear everything out and then start the car and see what happens. So, delete and yes. Deleting, erase was successful. So, Okay, now let's start the car. There's a little flutter in the idle, but this thing also hasn't ran in I don't know how long. The gas may be old. So, but you can see this thing's working. Active steering inactive. Uh, the active steering, not sure exactly what controls that. Let's see, maybe I have a wire that's not connected down here. I'm not sure. This, for some reason, this is not working. The control to move this back and forth, so I'm gonna have to look into that. Let's let it get up to operating temperature. I need to hook the exhaust hose up and I'll be back. Let's pop the hood. There it goes. I mean, it sounds good. There's no like lifter noise, there's no knocking. Squealing from the belts. I'm gonna let it get up to operating temperature. If nothing overheats, I'm gonna go try and drive it. So I'll be back. 
All right, so she's been running now for about, I don't know, five minutes or something. But I cleaned all the windows up because I'm gonna go take it out for a drive, filled up all the tires with air. Uh, no warning lights yet that have come on. Uh, so, you know what I would like to be able to get the seat to move back? I wonder if there's a fuse for the seat. I did check all the fuses, but uh, the electric fan did come on. You can hear it there. So that is working. There's no like major oil leaks. The bottom was oily. I'm not sure about the ride height. If that is supposed to be that low or if there's air suspension that's not working. But let's go out and drive it. All right guys, that's gonna do it for this video. We've got most of the electrical components put back in the car. It is running and driving. I took it out for a test drive and everything seems to be pretty solid. Uh, except for a small issue with the transmission, it's got a hard downshift and a slight maybe slip or shutter. Um, I'm hoping if I do a transmission service, it'll clear that up. So we'll be doing that in the near future. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay updated on this project and all future projects. And I'll see you in the next video.